Hello, this is Tutor Ted Jalescu with um, the second part of the 3D tunnels in After Effects using Freeform Pro tutorial series. Uh, last time I showed you how to create a uh, organic looking tunnel that you can fly around and fly in um, that can be used for uh, various purposes from uh, sci-fi theme to a medical theme maybe. If you are not familiar with the tutorial, you can find it here on the Creative Cow. And uh, please take a look at that because uh, the technique I'm going to show you today is different than the one I used uh, in this first tutorial. In part three of this tutorial, you will see how I combine the two techniques, the one in the first tutorial and the one I will show you now, to create this uh, elevator shaft shot uh, inspired by the movie Tron. And in part three, I'll also show you how to make uh, the disc that you see in here. And we'll start fresh. Uh, we will create first a composition of 800 pixels by 100 pixels, five seconds long, uh, square pixels, 25 frames per second. Uh, in this composition, I will create a new shape layer. And on the shape layer, I'll create uh, a rectangle filled with white, no stroke. Um, just a few pixels from the edge and about this thick. And within the shape, I will, on the shape layer, I will duplicate this rectangle and move it so. Then I will select the both rectangles within the shape layer and I will duplicate those, move them down, not to the very edge, but a few pixels away from the edge. On the same shape layer, I'll create a different rectangle, a little thicker rectangle. I'm going to bring that down a few pixels uh, away from the top edge. Just to know where I put them, I'll create now my uh, rulers at 200 pixels, 400 pixels, and at 600 pixels. Now, uh, the shape in the middle, I will uh, duplicate that, move that to have uh, the center on the 600 pixel, and then I'll duplicate the shape again and move that to be on the 200 pixel, duplicate that again, move that to be at the edge of the frame, the edge of my comp, with the center right on the very edge. Then I will duplicate the shape again and move that to the very edge on this side. Once I have all these shapes, I will select all of them from the top, duplicate them and move them to the bottom. Uh, now this is a shape that uh, you can design yourself. It doesn't necessarily have to be like the one I'm making. I'm just showing you an example that we'll use to create this tunnel. Now, this is my basic shape that I'm going to use for the displacement map and for the texture to create my tunnel. I will call this composition basic shape. One thing I want to mention, I'm working at 16 bits as far as the color space goes. There's a reason why I'm doing that, and I'm mentioning that right now. Uh, I will explain a little later. You will see why. I will create a, another comp by drag in my basic shape. I will call this comp displacement map. In this displacement map, I'm going to apply a few effects to it. I'm going to apply a fast blur, repeat edge pixels, blur seven. Then I'm going to apply matte choker. And then on top of that, I'm going to apply a glow. You can play with the matte choker till we um, get these rounded shapes. Now the blurriness will change that, so will affect the thickness of the lines. And then also, I can play with my glow. That's going to help me to achieve 
a softer, nice gradient at the edge. Now, if I do not repeat the edge pixels at the very end, you can see how my shape is curved as well, but I do not want that. I want it to be a straight edge at the very end of the frame. So I'm going to uh, select the repeat edge pixels for that. Now, once I have done this, I will go back to my project window, duplicate this comp, and call this texture. Once I've done this, I will uh, affect my displacement map by pre-comping this basic shape. I will pre-compose it, move all attributes to the new composition, and I will call this basic shape displacement. And on this shape, I will create a series of masks set on subtract and then feathered to give me um, this uh, this kind of look you will see how that affects my displacement I'm just adding detail here basically you can uh, play as much as you want with the shape displacement maps work on a grayscale values so 50% is um, the middle uh, whatever is under 50% towards black means you're pushing whatever is over 50% towards white, that means you're pulling the image towards you. So uh, I'm, I'm just creating here some details for the, my displacement map. Uh, I will uh, duplicate this mask and uh, I'm going to move it here just to create a, a, a nice pattern in, um, in my displacement map. Once I have this set, I can duplicate these, move them here, and one more time, I can just duplicate everything and move them as I need them to be right here. So now that I'm done with my displacement map, I'll create a new composition. I'll create a HD composition, 25 frames per second, five seconds long, square pixels. And then I will take my displacement map and my texture and I'll bring them in my comp. Uh, I can turn off the displacement map, and on the texture, I will apply Metal Freeform Pro. I will also add a new camera. Just a preset is fine. And use the Orbit tool to move that camera around so you can better see what's going on. This uh, is the base element for my tunnel. What I will do is first, I will set for displacement mapping. My displacement map layer, as you can see, is very wavy right now. Uh, I'm going to set a displacement height of 10. I'm going to enable the alpha clip, tie that to adaptive tessellation, um, and turn that on in the tessellation menu. Uh, I will also set the anti-aliasing to medium, and then I'll set the alpha clip to zero. And that's basically what it was. Well, that's basically what I'm going to do for now. Uh, then I will go into my grid and I will set up four columns and one row. Then I will uh, Go into my grid control points and I'm going to use just row one and uh, row zero and row one. And uh, I'm going to create a ring basically by doing a 3D distortion using my control points. The middle points, I'm going to push them back minus 200. And also here in Z space, minus 200. So that brought them in front. As you remember, this is an 800 pixel long image. So between the, these points, I have 400 pixels. So I push this up by 200 pixels. And now I'm going to push these down and bring them to the middle uh, so that I can have a square shape. Um, and what I will do is I'll take the points at the very edge and I'll push them 200 and then 200. And then this one, 200, and this one, 200. And then 
I'm going to bring them towards the middle by bringing them to zero here, zero here, zero here, and zero here. So now what I have is a shape that doesn't exactly look like a square, but let's see if I am going to use from the editing controls, auto tangents menu, enable auto tangents. And then if I turn the tangent tension to minus 100, then I will get a perfect square, but I do not want that. I want this to be a ring, so I'm going to turn it up to 100. Then I'm going to um, enable rows and point opposite bias. And after doing that, I will play with the endpoint bias, basically bringing it up to 45 degrees. Now this will give me a nice, smooth shape that I can use for my tunnel. It's basically a ring that I can use for my tunnel. Now, as you can see, uh, I cannot see through the elements, and I would like to do that. So what I need to do is enable 3D transparency for all layers. And this will enable me to see through my uh, rings. Another thing I would like to do is instead of having the displacement on the outside, I would like these to be displaced inside, which is an easy thing to do. I will change the height to minus 10. And there we go. I have a displacement inside my tunnel. Once I do that, I'm going to show you what the difference is between a 16-bit project and a 32-bit project. Are you ready? There we go. Once I turn 16 to 32-bit, you can see that I have a much higher displacement because uh, there's a lot more information there that Freeform Pro has to play with. So now, if I just turn my displacement to minus two, then or maybe minus five, then that gives me a much less extruded shape. Um, it's a very nice shape that I can play with. And also, now I can add a new layer, adjustment layer, and I can apply a glow which will give me a nice look, and that should do it. Now, uh, if I want to play with how this looks, let me just turn this a little more. One tip, it's very good to um, use fast previews, adaptive resolution. If I want to do this, I can lock my comp here and then go into my basic shape displacement layer and play with the filters here. If I want to increase my choke, uh, that will definitely change the look. And um, I can play with the blurriness, I can play with the choke, I can play with this glow, and uh, I will get a different, a very different look. All right, let's say I'm happy with the way this looks here. Uh, I can also uh, affect my displacement map by changing the feather on my masks. I can separate the pieces, make a sharp edge, and just make them uh, maybe like neons in a tunnel. Increasing the feather will help me unite the shapes again and just give a different look to this tunnel. All right, so let's say this is a look that I'm happy with. Now, as you could probably guess, if you watched my previous tutorial, uh, my tunnel is pretty much done. All I need to do is just change the number of instances from one to seven, let's say, and the offset 
I will change that to Y, 150 pixels, or maybe 100, and distribute equally from center. And there we go. We have a tunnel, a nice 3D tunnel that I can um, use, um, go around, go within. Um, obviously, I can change the way it looks just by adjusting various parameters, um, as I showed you within the mask, uh, within the depth mat, uh, or even within the texture, the glow, and so forth. Um, for best results in rendering, obviously, you can turn the anti-aliasing to very high, and you will get nice, smooth edges. And if you want a longer tunnel, all you need to do is um, just increase the number of your instances, and you will get a longer tunnel. So this is it. Thanks for watching part two of the 3D tunnels in After Effects using Freeform Pro series. Keep an eye out for the third and final tutorial of the series, uh, where again I will show you how to put together the two techniques to create this uh, shot inspired by the movie Tron.